I believe the word of God. Oh Lord, let it be unto me according to your word in Jesus name. And what do you say to that? Take that Bible and let's open to the book of Joshua chapter 2, sorry chapter 1 as you stand for the reading of God's word. Joshua chapter 1 and we are reading from verse 2. God said to Joshua, Moses, my servant is dead now, therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you and all these people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. I want you to read some places with me. Can you read verse 3, everybody? Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said to Moses. Everywhere you go in life, you will possess to God's glory. Let's read verse 5. Can we go? There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Can you say that is for me? Wow. Listen to that again. Let's read it one to go. There shall not any man be able to stand before me all the days of my life. As it was with Moses, so it will be with me. It will not fail me, nor forsake me. I decree over your life, you will not fail in life. Yeah. Jehovah will not fail you. Yeah. Let's read verse 6, 7, and 8 together. Can we go? Be strong and of a good courage. For unto these people shall you deliver, divide for an inheritance the land which I swore to their father to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper wheresoever you go. You will prosper in Jesus' name. I would like you to read that last verse we are reading in this reading, verse 8, loud and clear. Let us go. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then shalt thou make your way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Turn to your friend and say, you will have good success. What do you say to that? God bless you. Please be seated. We are still on the same series that we started last week. The key is to supernatural success. This morning, I will be dealing with a very important aspect of success in life, which is the seven dimension, the seven dimension of success, the seven dimensions of success. What do we mean? You can see from the passage that we have just read, God is totally committed to your success in life. God wants you to succeed. You will succeed in Jesus' name. The Bible makes it very clear here that it is God's plan that you should succeed. God is irrevocably committed to your success. He has a plan for your life. Jeremiah 29 verse 11, he said, I know the plans that I planned for you. Plans of peace and not of evil. To give you a hope and an expected end. Your hope will not crash in life. Your hope will be realized. Because God has a plan for you, we said it's a success plan. God has a plan for me. And that plan is a success plan. Can you say that to yourself? God has a plan for me, and that plan is a success plan. The plan of God is not for you to fail. No. God wants you to succeed. You are created to succeed. You will succeed in Jesus' name. You see, failure, disappointment, defeat, disgrace, they are not for you. God doesn't plan for you to be disgraced in life. You may be going through challenges. You will overcome the challenge. I say you will overcome the challenge. The plan of God for you is a success plan. That means before you arrive this end, God has planned that you will succeed in life. Oh yes. In fact, because of this, we say God wrote a book concerning you. He has written a book concerning your life. Psalm 139, verse 15, verse 14, 15. It says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made, marvelous, are your works. My soul knoweth that right well. And then it says, my substance were hidden when I was made in the secret, in the curious places. Then it says, you know, uh, look at what it says. 
and all my members when I was made in secret and closely wrought in the lowest part of the earth. Go to the next verse. And then he said in the next verse, it says that God has written all your members in a book. Your eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. And in your book, all my members were written. Before you came on the scene, God wrote a book about your life. In fact, the Bible says, all my members were written where, where, which in continuance, as I walk with the book, my life will be fashioned according to that. There are many things that want to fashion your life in the wrong way. The devil wants you to believe you are a failure. You are not. The devil wants you to believe that there is nothing about your life. That's a lie. God has made you to be fearfully and wonderfully made. The things you are going through now, you are looking at it and you are saying to yourself, why am I going through? Why is my life like this? Why am I not getting to where I'm going? It is because you need to know that success is not just about situation. Success is about the book. Everybody say the book. God has written a book about your life. You need to now work to make sure that that book becomes a reality. You are created for glory. You are meant to be a man and a woman who carries blessing and who succeed. You are not a failure. In fact, you are not a failure struggling, trying to succeed. No. You are not just struggling, trying, house hustling. We are trying to make it. Mm -mm. You are not supposed to try to make it. You are a success that is going to manifest. You are meant to be a success that's supposed to emerge. However, if you don't know some things, life will be playing like a football to you. Life will look like a mirage. Listen, there are things you need to know. Have you ever seen anybody who want to fail in life? No. Even students who don't read before they go to exam, they are expecting to pass. You can imagine. People who don't go to work, yet they want to be paid salaries. <laughs> no one wants to be a failure. Listen, do you know that people who knows they are not they are not qualified for a job, they still want to be given the job because success is good. Everyone wants to succeed. However, success is not a wish. Success is not a matter of wish. It's not a matter of luck. There are things you must learn. There are things you must put in place. You need to understand that your attitude to the book will determine your success in life. Your attitude to the book, God kept on telling Joshua, this book, this book of the law, this book shall not depart out of your mouth. Why? He has written a book before. In fact, the Lord Jesus put it this way, the life of a man goes as it is written of him. Something has been written for you. Check the book. You may be going through failure. There is no failure for you in the book. Check the book. You may be going through challenge and affliction. That is not what is written for you. If it is not written in the book, you have right to reject it. Hallelujah. What has been written for you in the book is not that you are going to be a disappointment. It's not that you are going to end up in the bad side of life. Can I tell you what is written in the book? You shall be the head and not the tail. Woo! Glory to God. Do you know what is written in the book? Whatever you put your hands upon, it will prosper. Do you know what is written in the book? You shall be the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not beneath. Do you know what is written in the book? Some people say, well, what gonna be, gonna be. Life is about, you know, anything can happen. Uh -uh. What is written in the book is this. With long life, it will satisfy you. You won't die before your time. I say you will not die before your time. Listen, untimely death is not in the package. Hallelujah. Can I tell you what is written in the book? He said, I am the Lord that he let you. That means no matter the sickness you face, I see you coming out of that sickness. In the name of the Lord, from now to the rest of your life, you will live healthy life in Jesus' name. As you are hearing me right now, what is not written in the book you are going through, we command them to get out of your life. Sickness, get out of your body. Failure, get out of your life. You know where you are going to end up? The book tells us where you will end up. You will not end up with sorrow. You will end up with joy. You will end up with glory.
Can you say with me, I will do well. I will finish well. Do you know many things we accept in life is not our portion. It's not written in the book. Hear me? The devil will want you to accept what God has not written for you. You must know obedience and following the book will lead you to supernatural success without sweating and struggle. You are not created to go through life. That doesn't mean challenges will not come. That doesn't mean you are not going to work. That doesn't mean you will not put effort. However, life is going to be great for you. I'm looking at someone in the name of the Lord. You will succeed easily than the last 10 years of your life. Do you really want to succeed? Then pay undiluted attention to the book. If you want to succeed in life, you cannot afford to be careless with the book. As long as you don't want the book, you can't enjoy supernatural success. Illiteracy is of the devil. Not be able to write is of the devil. When Satan wants to mess your life and destroy your life, he will make sure you will only be here and you can write. Do you know why Africa was backward? Our grandparents don't even have alphabet. We were building houses that has no toilet. I told you last week, education is from God. He spoke the Ten Commandments and then he wrote it with his finger. Who was their teacher? Everyone as they see it, they began to read. The most educated people on earth today are the Jews. The church is the bat of every university. Destroy illiteracy from your life. Fight every form of average mentality. Even if you don't know how to read and write, love books. The man called Ben Carson, he was the, one of the best surgeon doctors in the world. He's a preacher as well. He was one of the best brain. How did he become a, a great doctor? He used to be a dropout in school. The mother didn't go to school, but the mother loves books. The, the, the man, he said when they were small, they didn't even know the mother does not know how to read or write. They will, the, mother, the woman will say, bring the book. See, let me see what you did today. She does not know what is there. She's just reading it. And forcing them to read. He will put off the television and say, read. He said himself and his brother, they were not ready to read. But because of their mother's love, even though she was illiterate, the, the mother loves book. And then they kept on reading and kept on reading. The rest is history. At the time, he was even a presidential candidate of the United States of America. When you don't like book, we know where you will end. You will end on the rough side of life. A man who does not pay attention with books, he has no future that is glorious. Even if you don't have the opportunity to go to school, buy. Let them read for you. Amen? Amen? One of the reasons why you see me preaching and all of us were great was because of my elderly mother's love for book. I taught her to read Yoruba Bible. I taught her the alphabet. She would call me in the market. Come and teach me. And I would, hey, 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 hey. And today she's reading. She's actually planning to read English as well at 96. And you can't see it. That she's 90. You think it's about 70 years old. Books will determine how you will go far. So the Bible says, here, this book of the law shall not depart out of your life. There are two sides to success. You need to understand. If you really want to succeed in life, there are two sides. There are two parts to success. Success does not just jump on your head. A lot of people like to wish they want to dash me. There are many things they can dash you. They can dash you success. Even if they give you all the money of this world, they give you one billion. Within one week, you can destroy it. Because you don't have what it takes. Two parts of success. It's not about witches. It's not about wizards. Success is not just about crying and shouting. Hey, 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 father. You see, if all about success is prayer, all African countries will become like heaven. Am I canceling prayer? No. Do you notice there, there was nothing that God said to Joshua to pray? Did he say pray? Why did he refer to the book? Because it's not just prayer alone. You will pray, but it's not just prayer. Ninety percent, I think, of the issue about success have to do with book. He who hates books will end up a failure. 
The book of books is the Bible. You can read every other books and if you don't know the word of God, you still end up a failure. So God said to Joshua, number one, part of success, your attitude. 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 Your attitude to the book will determine how far you will go. Number two, part of success is aptitude. Aptitude. Number one, part of success, these two parts you must never forget. If you really want to succeed, you must Two legs with which success works. Success does not just stand and be praying. Success works with two legs. One, attitude. Two, aptitude. What is attitude? Attitude is your belief. Internal belief. Conviction. Your way of life. Your behavior tendencies. The things that is your perspective. The way you look at life. Your attitude. Your behavior. That's number one. Number two, what is aptitude? Your aptitude is talent. Your skill. The things you can do well. For Joshua, what is his aptitude? His aptitude is sword. He's a fighter. He's a warrior. He knows how to fight. He can fight. Do you know that some people are excellent boxers like Muhammad Ali? Some are might eagle in wrestling. The things you can do, that's your aptitude. In success, if you want to succeed in life, you need attitude. You need what? Aptitude. However, the two of them, the most important is your attitude. Why? Attitude will take you higher to where aptitude cannot take you. You can be very skillful and talented, but if you lack attitude and manners, you will scatter your life. Attitude, attitude, attitude. And you know, this attitude are not outside of you. They are internal. Now, remember last week we talked about the three keys that will help you in success. One, that you must cultivate and develop the unseen you. Success is not about external things. Success starts from within. From within you. Listen very carefully. And pay attention. And write the striking things the Holy Spirit is speaking to us. You know, when you fail within, you fail outside. It is your internal life that design your outward life. It is who you are inside. That will determine what you become outside. Success is not about buying and selling and running up and down. Success starts from inside of yourself. Sit down and ask yourself, what kind of a person am I? What kind of things do I believe? Some of us, our wrong belief, wrong mindset has made our life to be punished together. When you continue the way of thinking that breed and produce failure, you will never get success. Someone said it's only a mad person that will keep on doing the same thing and will expect that there will be a different result. In success, you have to sit down and look at your life. Who are you? We said, there, is, there are two parts to every human being. Actually, three, but two. The Bible told us that we are spirit, we have a soul, we live in a body. But two of them, that is the real you, are never seen. You can't see your soul, you can't see your spirit. The real you is not the one we are seeing outside. The one that is outside, that is moving around is a house. The real man in the house is inside of you. Nobody can reach you. In fact, the real man inside of you, nobody knows it but yourself and God. Only God knows the real you and yourself. You know yourself. Now the Bible talks about these two people that makes you yourself. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 17, and 18. It said to us that 
if our outward man perish, our inward man is renewed day by day. That means there is a part of you that is not seen. It's not visible to the eyes. It is that part that creates business. It is that part that makes opportunity. It is that part that is not seen in you that build great marriage, that become great parent. The unseen you is the driver of destiny. When the one that is not seen is a failure, there is no way you succeed physically. So the Bible talks about this you that is not seen, that is the most, is more important than the one you are seeing. First Peter, in fact, look at it there. For which cause we faint not, but do our outward man, man perish, yet the inward man is renewed. So there is an inward man inside of you. There is the you that is not black, that is not white, but is created in the image of God. The you, the real you, when he leaves this body, we call it the person died. But it does not die. It is only this physical body because the real you has left. Many people concentrate their life on this outward, this physical life. And all you are struggling for is what you will put as food inside this one. So you collect bribe if you don't have money. You womanize if you feel like, I mean, you drink beer. This outward man, the Bible says, perish. Many people's goal in life, all their goal is this outward man who does not live beyond 120 years at most. In fact, 120 is too far. But the inside of you, inside you is a real you that does not die. It, it lives forever. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 2, 3, 4 tells us that our that women should not concentrate on the outward life, but they should concentrate beautify their inner man. He said, whose adorning should not be of outward adorning or plaiting the hair. That doesn't mean you should not put your hair in order. Or, or some people say, if you plait your hair, you are going to hell. That's not sin. Sin is not that. Sin is what enters your spirit. What comes into your life. You need to be careful. If the outward man, you see, if your inside is dirty, your outside life will be dirty. Sin start from inside of you. That is why when people want to commit adultery or fornication or armed robbery, they think first. Because what comes out of your life, of your real you, is what defiles you. Also, what comes out of you is what we define and design your life. So the Bible says, you should, our women and also men, although he was talking about a mother first, he said, our outward beauty should not be just plaiting the air, should not be just wearing of gold. That doesn't make gold is bad. I spent time to explain that this morning. And then he says, of putting on of apparel. Some people say, well, don't put on gold. Don't remove your ring. Uh -uh, that's not it. If you remove your ring, you should also remove your clothes. God is not saying you should be walking naked. He's just saying that you should not concentrate, beautify your head, your toe. And some of us, you know, they told me of one time that people do air for 100,000. I said, they will not remove it. <laughs> eh? Am I? Mothers, is it true? Women, it's true. They say there are even some that have more than that. Eh? You do manicure, pedicure, and all the cure. At the end of the day, nothing is cure. It's not bad. But you see, the Bible is saying, as much as you are plotting and beautifying the outside, what you are doing is you are decorating only for death. It has a short time. But if you are decorating the inside, look at what it says. The next verse. It says it should not be the outward. Can we all read it together? But let that beautification be the eating man of the heart in that which is not corruptible 
even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of a great price. God is saying, if you can decorate your inside, there is no way your outside will be dirty. If your inside life is dirty, full of anger, full of animosity, there is no how beautiful a woman may look like. If she's not beautiful inside, she will not be marriageable. Am I correct? Some people look very beautiful outside, but they are killer. They are killer. Delilah. Eh? You see them beautiful, but they will chop off your head. <laughs> so, the Bible is saying here that your inner man, you should concentrate and make it more beautiful. And then look at what he said. He said, which is not corruptible. Which is not corruptible. How do you make your inward life to not be corruptible? Let's go to First Peter chapter 1. Look at First Peter chapter 1, verse 23. Put it on the screen. How do you make your inner man to be beautiful? How do you beautify? You know, many of us, we go to the saloon, you spend, you know, two hours. It's not bad. But what the Bible is saying is, if you spend two hours in the saloon to beautify your physical body, you should spend at least time three of it to beautify your spirit. So the point is, how do I beautify my spirit? First Peter chapter 1, verse 23. It is right there. Look at what it says. Let's read it together if you find it. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of what? In Corruptible. Do you see that in the same thing that deal with your inner man? Now he said, but of incorruptible. What is this incorruptible thing that you use to beautify your inner man? What is it? By the word of God, which liveth and abided forever. What will beautify your spirit is not even prayer. It's not deliverance. Mm -mm. What will beautify your spirit is the word of God. If you like, jump up and down. Say, I don't believe it. Go to Alaska. Say, no, I don't. You will come back to it. What will beautify your spirit is the word of God. So, that is why you no know, God told Joshua, this book is the key to your destiny. It must not depart out of your mouth. So, the corruptible seed that will make your inner man incorruptible is the word of God. You build the word of God to beautify your spirit. Are you blessed this morning? Did you get something this morning? Give the Lord a big clap offering. Let's thank him. The word of God does one very important thing. Let's now look. Why is this very important? Because the word of God. Remember what are the two parts of success? The two parts of success is what? Attitude and aptitude. The word of God. What empowers your spirit, the unseen you with the right attitude, which is more important than aptitude. Hello? Do you understand now? The word of God empowers your spirit with the right attitude. A man was almost going to become a manager in the bank, he was an assistant manager, he was just about to become a manager. And a small, a young man was brought to become his, you know, his boss. And the boy said something. Ah, no, don't do it that way. That's, he, he doesn't know the latest in, uh, you know, fintech that has come in. Those days when, you know, all the new things were coming into banking. He, he was used to the old style of writing. And he said, no, 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 that's not the way to do it, Mr. Man. And he got annoyed. He just took his hand, right, a resignation, and said, you can't talk to me like that. He left the job. They pay him one small little money. He thought he's big. By the time he finished it, I think maybe within a few months, that man was looking for five naira to buy pure water I couldn't find. It was terrible. We were praying and praying. I said, why did you leave? He said, it was anger. Only to discover in their family people are so bad with anger. One of his brothers took a cutlass and killed somebody among his family member. Anger! The word of God is the only thing that can put the right attitude in you. Praise the Lord. Now, if you want to succeed, there are these seven dimensions you must put in your life. Success 
if you are going to succeed, walk with this seven thing and you will see yourself successful in life. Yes, I am a success about to emerge. How will I emerge a success? How will I manifest success? These are the seven keys. If you follow these seven keys, you will eventually manifest success. We are not to struggle as a failure trying to succeed. We are a success about to appear. How do I appear as a success? These seven keys are what you need. Number one. Do you want to know those seven keys? Number one. They are all these. These seven dimensions are the dimensions that you must be able to assess in order to succeed in life. The first dimension. Dreams, desire, and vision. Dreams, desire, and vision. If you are going to start the journey of success, the first thing you need is not money. If you are going to embark on the journey, if you want to succeed in life, the first thing you need is not even human connection. Especially African and much more Nigerians, all they think, most people, money, give me money, give me money. Money is useless if you lack dreams and vision. There are no poor people anywhere on earth. There is only visionless people. What produces success starts with dreams. The journey of success begins with dream. For you to start to succeed, listen, if you want to succeed in life, success begins with your dream. Success begins with a dream. Success begins with a dream. Success begins with a dream. Once you stop dreaming, your destiny is in Kula. Lack of dreams and vision is what makes life to be horrible. The journey of success begins with a dream, with a desire, with a vision. You cannot start anything great in life until you have a dream. You can never become a professor in engineering when what you read is history. What is your dream? Many, many years ago, as a young boy, I came from a family where nobody has given their life to Christ until I gave my life to Jesus. I came from a town where nobody has a record of any Christian doing any great thing. But as a young boy, I don't know how it happened. I will be going to school. I just gave my life to Christ. And I will be reading in the, you know, on the way. And I'm dreaming. And I'll be dreaming. How to, how, I will go preaching the gospel. Nations to nations. How people will be blessed. I still remember the school. It was an, it's, it's a Muslim school called Anwarul Islam. I will go there during the holiday. After reading for some time, I close my eyes, carry my book, and I begin to see. I begin to see myself in my heart. I saw that I could be great in life. I saw life start with a dream. Many, many years ago, about over 30 something years ago, it was in a house in uh, Nike, in Enugu, a brother's house. I just came from university and I was in the house he went to work and I saw a tape recorder oh my god I preached myself how as if there were hundreds of thousands of people what are you seeing in your heart when God wants to make you a success he puts dreams in your heart Genesis 37 verse 5 and Joseph dreamed a dream Joseph dreamed a dream then they hated him Genesis 37 verse 9 and Joseph, dream another dream. What are you dreaming? Do you know your dream last year is where you are now? Your success today was your dream last year. What have you done with your life this year? Where have you been? You started the year without a dream. You enter into the year without a dream. You are just wishing something will just happen. Look at where you are. Life responds to dreams in your heart. What is dream? Vision. We are not talking about sleeping and snoring like a log of wood. Many of us, you talk about dreams. Once you see, have a dream that is bad. Hey, I can't sue it. I can't sue it. 
that's not the dream we are talking about. When you don't have a dream in your heart to pursue, you will be the dreaming useless dream when you sleep. <laughs> when you don't have real dream, you'll be dreaming useless. Look, it is very hard. I hardly have bad dreams. I always have good dreams. It is when you have no dream to pursue, that is when the devil has opportunity. A hide your hand is a workshop for the devil. The reason why you are having bad dreams is because there is no real dream in your heart. When you have a real dream, you'll be too busy with that dream. You'll be, you know, whatever you are thinking too much, it will become a dream. Because you, all you are thinking is which, which, which. The which will just fly on your head every time. Change the dream in your heart and the dream of your night will change. Change the dream of your... Oh, you see all this one? Hey, Satan is pursuing. You know what? I have even ordinary natural... People that are not born again, they don't have time to have bad dreams. <laughs> they don't have time. I, when you begin to have a dream in your heart and you begin to pursue it, pursuing your dream is the first key to success. Are you dreaming to open a supermarket? Are you dreaming to open a big restaurant? Are you dreaming to become a, you know, a great businessman? What are you dreaming? Many of us, we don't have dreams. You know how we live our life? We live by situation. What, is, what you are doing is situation. You see, Nigeria, man we, man, we have to church. Uh, you know, the world is becoming, the inflation is too much. Let me carry something and just say, mm -mm, life is not lived that way. You live life by having a vision. Genesis chapter 13, verse 14. God told Abraham, lift your eyes from where you are, north, south, east, and west, as far as your eyes can see, I will give to you. God will give you your dream. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm glad God will give you your dream. I say, God will give you your dream. I remember many, many years ago, when our church was under a palm front and we are just there, I, I would go on top of the hills opposite this ground and I would look from across. There were no banks there that time, but I would look and I begin to dream. I begin to see, I say, I can see the building. We didn't even have money to buy blocks, but one day, life responded to the dream. You see, you are not poor. It's because you never have a dream. You are not useless. You never have it. And many of us live life without any... You come to church, there is no dream. All you are just looking for is handout. Let somebody just give you something. Let somebody just buy something for you. Let, you never have a dream of yourself. This day is a day of deliverance. I see God putting a fresh dream in your heart. Success begin with a new dream. I see dream of greatness battered in your heart. I, do you know the, the, the largest church in the world is... A, used to be in South Korea. Nigeria has overtaken it now. The largest church in the world was, they have about eight services, about 800,000 at the time. Happened to start with a dream in the heart of Dr. Yonggi Cho. What are you pursuing? Listen, do you want to end your life the way you are going? You got to receive a new dream. Success does not start with buying, with selling, jumping up and down. What is the dream? A house can never be built except there is a plan. You need to receive a dream. If you don't have a dream, ask God for one. When you come to church, ask God to give you a dream for the church because this little, little dream you pick is what will make you to do great things in life. If you continue your life, if there are no new dreams, if you continue with the same dream you had, you see some people dream of just selling by the roadside, bolly and nepa, granuts, peanuts, and all their life, that dream will come to pass. Life respond to your dream. I dreamt as a young man, you know the story. About 40 something years ago, 40 years ago, I dreamt that I was going to have a Panevan car. Panevan Toyota car. That was my dream. I dreamt about that car. I, I don't have money. My family have never bought a car. But I dreamt of it. I dreamt of it. Exactly 10 years later. Exactly 10 years later. 40 years ago now. 40 years ago. Exactly 10 years later. I had Panevanka. Only the name was changed. Under Accord was the same thing. Life will respond to your dream. 
John G. Lake told us that many years ago, he was a, like when he was very small, a small child, eight years old, he entered into an office with his father. It was one of the executive insurance, one of the biggest executive insurance company in America. And as he entered, he said to himself, oh, one day, I want to have an office like this. After many years, he became the president of that same place, sat down in that same office. He forgot until one day he said, wow, I dreamt this before I came. Don't let Satan pass your life up and down. What is your dream? Number two D. The second D is the D of decision and direction. The D of decision and direction. Life is not about lottery. Life is not about, you know, uh, luck. Life is about choices. This second part is very important. After you have a dream, you must make a decision. Why? Decision will determine the direction your life will go. Decisions. Make some decision that will change your life. I see your life changing in Jesus' name. I say, I see your life changing in Jesus' name. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 19. I said before you this day, life and death, blessing and cursing. Choose life that you may live, you and your household. I see God guiding you to your next level. I see God taking you higher in life. In the name of Jesus, you will not end up on the bad side of life. Somebody is hearing me right now. Receive power for your destiny. In the mighty name of Jesus. Can I hear you say louder, amen? Before you make choice, you know, before you step out in life, before you make choices, major choices, major decisions, seek God. Why? Psalm 37 verse 23. Put it on the screen. Psalm 37 verse 23. Do you know what it says? The steps of a good man are ordered by the law. God wants to order your step. After you have a dream, you must know the steps to take. Many people have ideas of what they should do, but they have no steps. The steps you take will become where the direction of your life is going. Steps. You need to know steps. If you are going to climb a tall building, you need steps. Steps must be short and easy to climb. The Bible says God will order your steps when you seek him. Don't just marry a man. Don't just go into a relationship. Don't just start that business. Let God order your steps. Receive divine direction. Let God guide you. You see, success is not accidental. You need to make decision. When you choose wisely, your life goes right way. When you make bad choices, you begin to suffer what you are not supposed to suffer. The direction and the shape your life will take and become is determined by decision you take. There are decisions you made last year, you need to cancel it. There are some decisions you have that made you to be in financial trouble. I made a decision one time in my life. I used to think that, oh, money will only just come just like that. I thought you just have 100,000 naira, $50. I thought it just happened like that. I thought that you become rich just like that. I discover that's not the way. Financial freedom it's not just a loan by financial miracle. It also comes by financial understanding. So one day, I discover that one of the things that will make me free financially is to decide how much money I want to have at any time. So I discover that, hey, financial freedom does not come by just shouting, screaming. It's by deciding how much do I want to have at every time. So I discover that if I said, to, so I started saying to myself, I said, okay, every time I must have 10,000 naira as a balance. Once I have 10,000, I am broke. Because when you are broke, can you spend money? Once you are flat broke, you can't spend money. So I discovered that. Uh -huh. So 
I am the one spending the money. When am I going to be broke? When can I not spend money again? I said, okay, 10,000. It was difficult at the time. Are you getting something? But suddenly I discovered anytime I'm spending money and you get to 10,000, I say, I don't have money again. I don't have money again. I then discovered that it started growing back. Started growing back. Started growing back. Suddenly I discovered that those days I will be flat broke. Then I'll begin to cry, begin to pray. But I now realize that, hey, if I can just set a target at 10,000, I can't spend money anymore. I tie my mouth. I tie my pocket. I tie my bank account. Then I say, ah, the thing works. Then I move to 20,000. Then I move to 30,000. I'm still working on myself. So I discover many people became broke. When their life is down, they spend everything. <laughs> Come and deliver me. You will be praying useless prayer. You just need to make decision. Somebody is making a decision to be free financially forever. Somebody is going to be loose from every financial embarrassment. I see in the name of the Lord, you begin to have money like you have never had money in your life. You will not be poor in your life. Favor will come for you. Direction will determine where you are going. Decision determine your direction. What decision are you making? Last year, what decision do you make? You need to make some radical decision that will take your life to another level. If you are wise, you will know that we are making some decisions. That's why you are seeing some things you are seeing. Your life will not change except you change your decision. Look at the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15. He went to the father and said, give me all my inheritance. Didn't the father give him all? Didn't the father give him his inheritance? It was a decision that he made that was responded to. What decision are you making? Then, what did he do with the money? Did the money multiply? He wasted it. He wasted it in riotous living. Then he was eating pig food. Look at how he changed his life. What did he do? He just made another decision. Oh, I will go back to my father's house. And that changed his life. If you make a decision for Jesus, heaven will become your home. If you make a decision, you can be free from sin. You cannot be free from sin by your power. But if you make a decision for God, it's going to back you up. I see somebody making a decision today. You will end this year better than the way you started it. Let your amen be louder than your neighbor. God has promised he will guide you. Psalm 32 verse 8. He will guide you. He will direct your path. Psalm 32 verse 8. Put it on that. You will see it there. Psalm 32 verse 8. He said, I will guide you with my eyes. I will lead you. I will instruct you the way to go. Let God guide you. That is decision and direction. Psalm 32 verse 8. I will instruct you and I will teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eyes. Tell your neighbor, let God guide you. Stop leading yourself. Number three, the third D is discipline. I will take a little time to explain this before we close. First Corinthians chapter 9 verse 24 to 27 tells us that everybody is running a race. Everybody is running a relay. But is it everybody that win? Is it everybody that run in a race win? No! He said, everybody run a race, but not everybody win. Then he said, run, and so that you may obtain. Then look at what he says. First Corinthians chapter 9. How do you run to obtain? How do you succeed? Verse 24. First Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 24. Look at what he says you should do. There are some things you must do so that you can win. Can we go to the next verse? Put it on the screen. Thank you. And every man that strives, everybody that is competing is temperate. You cannot wear a bada, three piece a bada to run a relay with a Musa and you want to be a world leader. Have you ever seen anybody running a relay to win trophy? You end and wear, you know, uh, a bada. No. Temperate. If you want to succeed, you must discipline yourself. Discipline yourself. Discipline yourself. They temperate in all things. Now, they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we are incorruptible. Go to the next verse. Quickly. I therefore run not as uncertainly. I fight not as one that beats the air. Many people
who are beating the air. They wish that success will just come. And at the end of the day, they say, why is my life like this? That's not the way. That's not the way. There are some things you must remove from your life. Discipline. What is discipline? Discipline is paying the price for success. Pay the price. Can you imagine many, many people in Nigeria, they want to wake up and go to work by 9 o'clock and they still want to be paid salary and they want to be promoted. It doesn't work. Can you imagine somebody in Nigeria, he knows all the money, profit and loss. He uses it to buy a swabi and he still wants to become a multimillionaire. Don't deceive yourself. Discipline yourself. Discipline. Discipline will help you to do a lot of things. What happens when somebody is not disciplined? One, you become an excuse giver. You always be giving excuse. It is the rain and the traffic. Once you see somebody giving excuse, that person cannot succeed. Number two, bad choices. You begin to make wrong decisions. When you are not disciplined, you begin, anything goes. Number three, when you are not disciplined, you become kana. If you're a Christian, you become a kana Christian. Number four, when somebody is not disciplined, you perform poorly. You perform poorly in school. You perform poorly at work. You begin to say, it's a witch that is after my life. It's a wizard. It is your carelessness. When you lack discipline, you become lazy. You become slumbering. When you're supposed to be studying, you'll be watching television. When you're supposed to be praying, you'll be doing something else. When you don't have discipline, you become lazy in life. Then you become a waster of time. Lack of discipline makes you to waste time. Makes you to waste opportunity. Time is going. You think you are going to be young all your life. You wasted it. You are not disciplined. Discipline your body to study. Discipline your body. Discipline your life. That's how to bad success. Poor testimony. When you are not disciplined. People say, you mean that one is a Christian and is going to that church? That man who is always begging. Who is always taking money. He borrows. He doesn't pay. Number for the dedication. The seventh, the fourth dimension of success is dedication. You see about dedication in the Bible. John chapter 12 verse 23 to 25. Jesus said, except a corn of wheat fall down to the ground and die, it abides alone. But when it die, it brings and grow. It come back to life and bring forth much. If you want to succeed, number one, dream. Number two, what is it? Decision and direction. Number three, what is it? Discipline. Number four, what is it? Dedication. What is dedication? Dedication is what determines your level of success. How dedicated you are will determine whether you have high success, low success. Are you dedicated? Ded dedication will determine whether you become a millionaire or thousandaire or hundredaires. Dedication. Dedication. What is dedication? One, it means to stay focused to a chosen call or cause. To be focused. Many people are not focused in life. Their eyes are up and down. They go from one church to the other. They never have a church. They can say, this is where I want to serve God. They are always looking here and there. Stay focused. They sell peppermint tomorrow. They sell that carrot next day. What is dedication? Dedication means to be totally sold out. You don't have a plan B. You are sold out. If you're a technician, you are giving your best story. When, you, when you're a Christian, when you're a member of a church, you are sold out to the church. What is dedication? Dead to self. You are ready to die for your cause. That is dedication. You are totally committed. What is dedication? Deadly commitment. To be consistent to your goal. You are not hearing what people are saying. You are focused to where you feel God is leading you. When you have said to a business, no matter the challenge, you are not moved. You don't run up and down. A man came one time and he said, his wife, they have been married for 20 years. He said, this woman is the reason for my poverty. I said, who told you so? This woman that I've been suffering with you for 20 years. Before I know, he carried the woman, dropped it in the, father's, in the woman's father's house. I thought everything. I said, no, it's not this woman. It's not. I said, no. He carried the woman, returned the woman. He pretended as if he was going to some and just dropped the woman. After five years, the poverty went to power 1,000. He 
It was terrible. He almost died. Then he came to ask for something as a sit down. This woman you said is the witch that was after you. At least you have dropped the woman. How come about your service like this? When you are not dedicated to a cause, life will be blowing you here and there. But that stop from now in the name of Jesus. What is dedication? I wrote some things here. You see, dedication is give life the best you can and expect it to give back to you the best. Are you totally dedicated? We're going to dedicate a child today. It's not just that we pray over the child and go. Dedication means the father and the parent are dedicated to train that child in the way to go. What are you dedicated to? What will people know you for? Success comes by intentional, conscious, purposeful preparation that is backed by a strong decision. Are you dedicated? Are you totally sold out? Dedication numbers five. The fifth D is determination. You see that in First Samuel chapter 30. David, everything was gone. They carry his wife, carry his children. Then he said, he got a young man and discovered where the people were. God told him, pursue, you will recover her. God had already told him. Sometimes we wonder, ah, they told me I will succeed. They told me I will have breakthrough. Why is it not working? It is because these seven days are not there. You refuse to add them to your life. Anointing is great, but without all these seven things, you will never succeed. You need to understand. You know what David did? He started pursuing as he was pursuing. 400 soldiers with him. 200 got to a, a brook, a stream. They were tired. They said, ah, oh God, we can't pursue anymore. Ah, David said, let's go. They said, no, we are not going. They stayed there. David continued with 200. Only 200. And they were able to recover everything. They brought them back. What am I saying? Don't give up. Many people they easily give up at the edge of their breakthrough. So, his kingdom will have been established forever. Someone said, wait, I'm coming. I'm coming to do a sacrifice to give thanks to God, to establish your kingdom. After seven days, he could not wait anymore. He said, everybody scatter. And as he left to start doing sacrifice for himself, Samuel appeared. And he said, now God will have established you. You missed it. Little determination could have saved you from great trouble. Don't give up! No matter what you are going through. Who knows? The time you say you are not going to do anymore, that is when God will raise somebody else in your place. Determination. A woman came with a crippled child in a revival where God was moving. I was a young man there. Several of us, blind eyes opening. And for several weeks, the crusade, the revival continued. This child was not ill. One night, the woman carried the baby and said, we are going. The following morning he left. That night, my, my co-tenant in the house, my house was far, close to the church, the co-tenant slept and had a dream. An angel appeared. Where is this woman? Say, yes, she had just left. And the angel said, this is the breakthrough. This is the healing of the child. He had just left. Many people in churches will have become great. The time the angel will come for them, they have bolted somewhere else. Are you determined? Don't just serve God because of the present. Be determined. Don't give up. If you fail, rise up again. The Bible says seven times will the righteous man fall. And seven times he will rise again. I see you rising again. I see you rising again. Number six, the seventh day is diligent. What is diligent? To do things excellently. To stand out. To become a master in your field. Anything you are doing, if you want to succeed in life, do it with all of your best. Don't ever, if you are a preacher, you are a pastor, if you are preaching, don't preach like a ritual. Preach with all of your heart. Don't do religion. If you are in an office, if you are working, give it the best. Diligence means to keep at it. Practice makes what? Perfect. Practice makes what? Perfect. Many people want quick success. They want fast things, but they are not ready to be diligent. Look at the way people do work in Nigeria. Because they want money. Just give me. And they do jeke, jeke work. Now they carry construction work to people in Kotonou. People in, in uh, where? Togo. They don't want to give to Nigerians because we don't like to be diligent with things. 
If you are a choir member, sing diligently. If you are beating the drum, do it diligently. Anything you are doing, give your best to it. Because if you don't give your best, you will never get the best out of life. And only the best is for you. If you are frying peanut, granite, do it very well. Amen? If you have a restaurant, do it very well. Can you imagine what people do today? Some people will carry water from the well, put it inside a bottle, and call it bottle water. You think it's real, but wickedness. Anything you are doing, give it the best. Be diligent. Tell your neighbor, say be diligent. The reason why you must be diligent is Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. He who come to God must believe that he is and is a rewarder of those who diligently seek it. If you want to get anything from God, you have to be diligent. Diligent in prayer. Diligent in Bible study. Diligent in your family life. Anything you want to do, don't do it twice. Do it once and do it very well. Praise the Lord. Finally, number seven, distinction. What does it mean to be distinct? He said, arise, shine, for your light is come. After you have done these five, six things, the next thing that will happen, you shine. Your, your life shine. You shine. You stand out. You become different. You achieve great things. I see you will achieve great things. In the name of the Lord, your dream will not die. That dream God put in your heart will come to pass. You will build that house. You will buy that car. That thing you are expecting will come for you. You will not end up on the wrong side of life. In the name of Jesus, I speak to your life. This seven dimension of success, receive them in your life in the name of Jesus. The word of God will work for you. Are you blessed this morning? Have you learned something great? Rise on your feet, give the Lord a clap offering. Let's thank him. Give the Lord the best of your clap. Glory to God. Glory to God. Can you say with me, success is my portion. Failure is not for me. Can you declare and say after me, in the name of Jesus, any wicked arrow of failure that is targeting my life, back to the sender. Raise up your toe and say, in the name of Jesus, I cancel failure from my life. Anything causing me to fail, die right now. Every spirit of failure, I'm not hearing you, every spirit of failure, get out of my life. I will succeed. I will not fail. Spirit of failure. Pack your load. Get out of my life. Open your mouth and begin to declare everything that caused me to fail. I command you to get out in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Raise up your right and say today I command failure die in my life. In the name of Jesus, anything that caused me to fail, any area I am failing in life, failure terminate from me. I terminate failure in my life. I terminate failure in my family. I shall not fail. I shall succeed. I shall not fail. Open your mouth. Begin to declare it. Glory to God. Lord, we receive grace to succeed. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, mighty name we pray finally raise up your hand and say right now i receive grace to succeed in life i receive grace oh lord give me a new dream give me a new power to succeed like never before i receive grace to succeed i receive grace for a new dream open your mouth begin to receive it open your mouth begin to pray lord i receive grace to succeed mention your areas of of vocation or discipline your business i receive grace to succeed in this business i receive grace to excel in every area of my life lord i receive grace lord i receive grace thank you father in jesus mighty name we pray in jesus mighty name we pray raise that hand up as your hand is above your head today I decree in the name that is above every other name, as your amen is loud and clear, the anointing pull you out of failure. The anointing pull you out of shame. Today, you are living the value of failure. You are moving to the topmost top of success. I decree now, rise up to success. 
Rise up to victory. Rise up to breakthrough. In the name of Jesus. Your story changed from today. Go and succeed. Go and excel. Go and manifest. Somebody say I will manifest success. Somebody say I will manifest glory. Somebody say I will manifest glory. Say success is my portion. I cancel failure. I terminate failure. I will succeed. In the name of Jesus, move your hand. Say, I cancel failure. In any area of my life, I cancel failure. I cancel failure. I cancel failure. Now take a step. Say, I am going forward. Backward never. Forward ever. Forward ever. I'm going forward. I am going forward. I am going. Take a step. Speak to your life. Say, I am going forward. Spiritually, maritally, financially, in my business, I'm going forward. My life, go forward. Everything in me, go forward. Go forward. No more backwardness. No more going backward. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Can we lift your voice and begin to thank him for what you have had today? Give him all the glory. Give him all the praise. Bless his name. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him.